back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. So obviously we talked about her a couple weeks ago, but Caitlin Clark is still a major topic of conversation out in the world. She might've lost the finals in women's college basketball, but she came out on top in terms of opportunity and fandom. She went on SNL. She has brands like Prada dressing her. She was the number one draft pick for the WNBA and it all seemed great until people saw her contract. And then people started screeching for literally no reason. And we're going to talk about that today. Before we do, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and then ring that notification bell so that you never miss one of our uploads. I don't know if Barstool was the first to drop details about her contract, but their post certainly got the most traction. It has millions upon millions upon millions of impressions on Twitter. But they posted this, Caitlin Clark, number one overall pick, rookie contract, four years, $338,056. And then it goes through year by year. She'll end up making a little under 100K in year four. Now, first of all, we have to talk about the obvious. Barstool, I have a bone to pick with you because... You did her so dirty with that photo. She is a stunning girl. I don't know why you picked that. I don't know why you put that filter on her. Please hire a female social media director to fix this because no woman wants that filter on their face. But people really didn't care about the filter. They cared about her salary. Less than 100K a year for the WNBA for the number one female basketball player right now. And granted, she is a rookie but she was the number one pick. She is huge. She is bringing in huge audience numbers and people were appalled. Now, if you don't know anything about anything, this might seem crazy. Somebody said, this is gut-wrenching. The average NBA salary is 1,119,563 USD. The disparity in athletics per gender is disgusting. I mean, do you literally know nothing? You probably don't even know about colostrum, which I can teach you about today. Now, if you guys are like me, then you're probably always on the lookout for things to boost your immune strength. And I am so excited to tell you guys about an incredible product products that I discovered called Armra Colostrum. Armra is truly the gift that keeps on giving. And if you don't know, colostrum is the milk that cows produce right after giving birth. And it is incredibly rich in nutrients and antibodies. It is basically liquid gold. Armra Colostrum will help you strengthen your skin, your lungs, and your gut barriers. Plus, Armra optimizes your microbiome and activates cellular health and performance to revive your entire body's health. If you guys know anything about me, you know that I am always on the move. I work like crazy. We're traveling constantly, doing tons of stuff. I need to make sure that my immune system is working at top speed, which is why I rely on colostrum. And I've been taking Armour's Colostrum for the past few months, and I have already noticed a difference in my skin and my overall health. And you guys know that I'm always so excited about new natural products that are animal-based, especially from grass-fed cows. I have so many sponsors now that are involved with grass-fed cows, and it's literally the greatest thing ever. And Armra is just one of the best. Armra products are clean, they are safe, they are backed by extensive research, and they are manufactured under the most rigorous testing and quality standards in CGMP and FDA-certified facilities, so you know that it's good. With our environment evolving and our everyday chemicals, pollutants, pathogens, and processed ingredients threatening our mental and physical state, our bodies need protection now more than ever. And you can get that through colostrum. If you want to give Armra a try, which I highly Highly recommend. I've worked out a special deal for my viewers. Right now, you will receive 15% off your first order. Go to tryarmra.com slash cooper or enter cooper at checkout to get 15% off your first order. Again, that's tryarmra.com slash cooper. I promise you will feel amazing when you take it. You'll be in tip-top shape to get back to fighting these feminists because they are ridiculous. Somebody else said, regular people make more than this doing a nine to five. Is this a joke? This is bogus. They have made more headlines than any man that is currently playing, paying women what they deserve in sports. Hope you got a date from that tweet, dude, because I think that is what you were fishing for. Hope the feminists love that. But back to the point. Another person said, decided to Google WNBA salaries before the draft and I actually want to die. What the hell? Even Biden got involved, albeit it was less dramatic, but he tweeted and said, women in sports continue to push new boundaries and inspire us all. But right now we are seeing that even if you're the best, women are not paid their fair share. It is time that we give our daughters the same opportunities as our sons and ensure that women are paid what they deserve. Sir, are you actually that dumb. I genuinely hope that this is just something that your terrible social media intern posted and that you do not actually believe this because this is ridiculous. Fair share, that is literally what they are getting paid. Caitlin Clark's salary, even as the number one draft pick, but as a rookie, that is her fair share based on the market, which is based on how many people watch their games and bring in money to the networks and the teams. That's how it works. That is how business works. It is basic economics, but of course, <laughs> silly me to expect you to understand how the economy works, just saying. Brad Palumbo, who I used to work with at Fee, he tweeted this and he said, the WNBA loses roughly $10 million every year. It is never profitable. I did not know that. I fact-checked it. That is true. And that is unfortunate. Anyway, he goes on and says, the WNBA salary cap for an entire team is 1.46 million. That is how much all of their salaries combined 
needs to be. I'm not sure how anyone can complain that a rookie like Caitlin Clark isn't getting paid millions, especially when she is deservedly going to make bank in sponsorships. Matt Walsh obviously was ranting about this on his show. He tweeted something similar saying, the WNBA salary discourse is the dumbest thing I've seen on this website so far this year. The league has been in existence for 30 years and has never once turned a profit. Oh my God, it's so embarrassing. None of the idiots complaining about the salaries actually consume the product. The league is a charity case kept afloat by the NBA, which generates well over a hundred times the revenue and gives some of it to the WNBA so that we can all feel good about the fact that a women's basketball league exists, even though none of us have any interest in watching it. That is harsh, but he is also completely spot on. There were no lies there. In an ideal world, let's live in fantasy land for a second. Would it be awesome if all the players, both men and women, were making millions and millions of dollars? Of course. In a perfect world, we would all be making millions and millions of dollars. We would have no problems and we would just like live in candy land. But it is not an ideal world. And your salary is not just based on your performance. It is based on the industry in which you choose to work. It is based on the company where you choose to work, how much money that company brings in, where the company is located. I could go on. It is based on so many other external factors that do not revolve around you or your gender. It does not matter that Caitlin Clark is an incredible player. She was never going to make what men make in the NBA because people do not watch the WNBA, especially women, which is the most hypocritical part of this entire thing. Oh my gosh, look at this. WNBA.com website traffic demographics. Audience composition can reveal a site's current market shares across various audiences. WNBA.com's audience is 60.39% male and 39.61% female. So men majorly outpace women in support of the WNBA. Who's sexist now, huh, ladies? And you might be saying, well, Brett, that is just information on website traffic. That doesn't determine anything. Okay, true. That was just the first thing that came up. Let's scroll down. Let's go a little deeper. Here are some numbers from 2023. Level of interest in WNBA in the United States as of March 2023 by gender. Okay, we have avid fan, casual fan, and not a fan. Men, 11% are avid fans compared to 4% of females. Casual fan, 29% compared to 19%, 77% of these women said that they were not a fan, did not watch compared to 60% of men. I think that graph alone is just a mic drop. I mean, come on, feminists. You are online crying about the sports wage gap, about Caitlyn's contract, about the women's soccer team not being paid enough. It is gut-wrenching, whatever you said in that tweet. I literally want to die. You know who's to blame? You. Literally you, you're not watching. Somebody tweeted and said, everyone who's complaining about how much Caitlyn Clark is getting paid better have season tickets to the Indiana Fever. If you don't, then don't act surprised. This is not a wage gap issue. It is a viewership and league revenue issue. These women on Twitter are whining about the problem so that they can feel vindicated and like they have the moral high ground and like they are still victimized, like we still have a reason to be fighting for women's equality, but they are doing nothing to actually solve the problem that they have decided is so important. A problem that really is not a problem, it's just a consequence of how the market works. So just give me a break. One woman from one of the tweets that we read above, one of the really dramatic ones, she replied and said, if you are a man popping into my mentions to justify or defend this in any way, I beg you to literally stop talking. Stop talking! I think they have a right to speak. The only reason that we have a WNBA is because of the NBA and their $15 million a year endowment. And the reason the players are even paid that much is because of the male viewers who outpace the female viewers. So shout out to you Kings, you are paying Caitlin Clark's salary. But back to Caitlin, she's incredible, objectively an amazing player, a great role model for women everywhere. She is going to be more than fine. She already has a slew of sponsorships like this huge one from Gatorade, which was announced at the end of last year. Breaking Iowa star Caitlin Clark has signed a multi-year deal with Gatorade. Clark's NIL portfolio now includes Gatorade, Nike, State Farm, Buick Tops, and H&R Block. And this was all while she was still in college. Now she has been signed to the Indiana Fever for less than a week. And it just came out that she has signed a signature shoe deal with Nike. And it is worth upwards of $20 million. One guy tweeted about this and said, Caitlin Clark landing a 20 million plus signature shoe deal with Nike should end all debate about whether she made the right financial decision going to the WNBA. Not only did she already have an NIL deal with Nike, but Iowa is a Nike school and she wouldn't have had the free agency leverage to negotiate this while in college. For context, Clark met with three brands, Nike, Adidas, and an Under Armour meeting featuring an appearance from Stephen Curry. Nike came in over the top and got the deal done. So shout out to Caitlin Clark and her team. It is a massive deal and everyone in the WNBA will benefit from it. It will be amazing for the WNBA and she will be amazing for the WNBA. And I think that they'll soon realize that once they stop complaining about fake problems and trying to pit her against black players, which shocker, they are still doing. We talked about that two weeks ago. They are still going. They're now making it about other things, which is just unproductive and ridiculous, as you all know. But I hope that those record-breaking numbers that she brought in for women's college basketball translates over the WNBA. Truly, I do. I hope that she changes the game because she's an amazing player. She has a great passion. She's inspiring people. I want to see her win. And I hope that all the feminists crying over the pay gap actually tune in. It will be the first time that they've actually ever been consistent on an issue, which would be lovely to see.
Well, guys, I hope you liked that video. Make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel if you have not already. And if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and on Snapchat and on TikTok. See you guys next time. Bye.